So let's spend some time reviewing the convolution integral. The convolution integral was written right here. y of t is an integral from minus infinity to infinity, x of tau times h of t minus tau d tau. And the shorthand notation that we use for that is x of t convolved with h of t, where the convolution symbol is the star. And to understand this integral, we need to know what the different quantities in the integral are. What is x of tau? What is h of tau? What is h of minus tau? Etc. So in the subsequent charts, let's uh, do a little example and just make sure we know how to work these types of integrals. So what we want to do is we want to evaluate the integral y of t is an integral from minus infinity to infinity x of tau h of t minus tau d tau. And for this example, let's work with the following signals. Let's work with the signal x of t, which is just a rectangular pulse function. It's zero everywhere except on the interval from minus 1 to 1. It's equal to 1. And let our t other time domain signal, h of t, also be a rectangular pulse function. But let's make it a little more interesting. Make it slightly non-symmetric and have a slightly larger width than x of t. So it's a signal at zero everywhere except over the interval from minus 1 to 3. So here are the steps to computing the convolution integral. The first thing we need to know is we need to know what x of tau is, so we're going to sketch that. The next thing we need to do is know what h of tau is, so we'll sketch h of tau. Then we will sketch h of minus tau, which is a time-reversed version of h of tau. And then we can sketch h of t minus tau. So h of t minus tau is the other argument of the integral. In step one, we compute or sketch x of tau. Here in step 4, we'll be computing h of t minus tau. So at that point in time, we'll have the two pieces of the integral, and we can take their product. That's exactly what we do in step 5. We're going to multiply x of tau times h of t minus tau, and then we're going to integrate. We're going to integrate this product, and then we're basically going to repeat this process for a whole bunch of different values of t. So in part 4, when we sketch h of t minus tau, t is going to be a variable, and depending on its value, the product in step 5, x of tau times h of t minus tau, is going to look different. So we're going to have to repeat steps 4, 5, and 6 for different values of t. Alright, so step 1. Let's sketch x of tau. x of tau is just x of t with t replaced by tau. So it's that simple. So if we already know what x of t looks like, which is this, sketching h of tau is x of tau is very simple. It's literally replacing t with tau. So step one is almost trivial. Step two, we need to sketch h of tau. h of tau is just h of t with t replaced by tau. So it's the exact same thing. If we know what h of t is, we can easily sketch h of tau by just replacing the t's with tau. So that's what we've done. So these first two steps are very straightforward. Step three, we need to sketch a time-reversed version of h of tau. So here's h of tau from our previous step. When we sketch h of minus tau, we just flip it on the time axis. It's called a time reversal. So h of minus tau is just a time-reversed version of h of tau. So here's its plot. So instead of starting at minus 1 and going to positive 3, it starts at minus 3 and goes to positive 1. Everything has been flipped on the tau axis. Step four, we need to sketch h of t minus tau. And this is the part where people typically struggle the most. The way I like to do this is I like to look at the picture for h of minus tau. So there's the picture h of minus tau. When I add t to the argument of h of minus tau to create this signal h of t minus tau, I'm actually just adding a little t onto the points of the axis. So minus 3 becomes minus 3 plus t. 1 becomes 1 plus t. So I've sketched here h of t minus tau along the tau axis that has a shift of t. You'll notice that I have not drawn a vertical line to indicate the origin because right now depending on the value of t I don't really know where the origin is. The time origin 0 could be way to the right of this rectangle or it could be way to the left of this rectangle. So really this sketch that I've made right now is for a general value of t. So this is good for any value of t. To be specific, let's actually just evaluate this for a 
couple of special cases. For example, what if t was equal to minus 10? Well, if t was equal to minus 10, then the leftmost point would be minus 3 minus 10 is minus 13, and the rightmost point would be 1 minus 10 is minus 9. Or what if t was equal to 7? Well, for this specific case, the leftmost point would be minus 3 plus 7 is 4, and the rightmost point would be 1 plus 7, or 8. So depending on the specific value of t, we can sketch what it looks like exactly. But the key is to be able to sketch h of t minus tau for a general value of t. And that's usually the part that people struggle with the most. All right, step five is we need to multiply x of tau times h of t minus tau. So if you remember, here's x of tau. And we're going to multiply it by h of t minus tau. And this is the general plot we came up with in step four. Here's where we start doing our loop. We need to take this product for a whole bunch of different values of t, and depending on the value of t, they're going to be different cases. So right now we're kind of going to iteratively work through steps 4, 5, and 6 on one of those previous charts to come up with the different cases. In case 1, the case we're going to consider first is when 1 plus t, and let's think about what 1 plus t is. 1 plus t is the front edge of h of t minus tau. So it's that very front edge of the rectangle. So we're going to consider the case when 1 plus t is less than minus 1. Why did I choose minus 1? Well, minus 1 is the back edge of x of tau. So if I sketched x of tau and h of t minus tau on the exact same axis, here's what it would look like. So I plotted x of tau in black, and I put h of t minus tau in red. And when 1 plus tau t, the front edge, is less than minus 1, this is what these two signals look like. And you can see what's going on here. These signals do not overlap in time at all. So when I multiply them together, which is what I need to do to evaluate the convolution integral, which we do now in step 6, their overlap is 0. So their product is 0. So I just have to integrate 0, which is 0. And these integrals should actually be over tau, right? I had a mistake there initially. We're integrating over the tau axis. So let's simplify the bound just a little bit. So we started off with the case where 1 plus t, which is the front edge of h of t minus tau, was less than minus 1. We can simplify that just a little bit. If 1 plus t is less than minus 1, if I subtract 1 from both sides, I end up with t is less than minus 2. So what we've just done is we've come up with one piece of the solution. We now know that the convolution integral, which we're calling y of t, is equal to 0, because that's what I just computed, and it's equal to 0 for t less than negative 2. All right, let's go to the next case. The next case is when 1 plus t is greater than negative 1, but 1 plus t is less than a positive 1. Again, why did I choose this? Choose 1 plus t. 1 plus t is that front edge of h of t minus tau, and negative 1 is that back edge of x of tau. So if I sketch x of tau and h of t minus tau on the same tau axis again, this is kind of what the cartoon looks like. That front edge of h of t minus tau is now gone past the back edge of x of tau. So there is some overlap now, and the overlap is denoted here in this gray area. So when I take the product of these signals, when I perform the convolution integral, I actually have some overlap now. So let's do that. I have to integrate x of tau, h of t minus tau d tau. By looking at the picture there, I can tell where the limits are. The limits of the integral are going to reduce to the region where I actually have non-zero content. So the non-zero content is starting at minus 1, and it goes up to the front edge of h, which is at 1 plus t. So I have to integrate from minus 1 to 1 plus t. Over that period of tau, over that region of time, x of tau and h of t minus tau are both equal to 1. So I've replaced them with 1 times 1. So this is an easy integral. I just need to integrate from minus 1 to 1 plus t uh, over d tau, which is 1 plus t minus minus 1 which is equal to 2 plus t. Again, let's simplify the bounds. One of the bounds that we had was 1 plus t greater than or equal to negative 1. So if I subtract 1 from both sides, I can see that that means t is greater than or equal to negative 2. 
and the other bound that I had is 1 plus t less than positive 1. So this is considering the case when the front edge of h has not passed the front edge of x. So if I subtract 1 from both sides, I get t less than 0. So we've got another part to our solution. We now know that y of t is equal to 2 plus t for the values of t between minus 2 and 0. Case 3. Case 3 considers the case 1 plus t greater than or equal to 1 and minus 3 plus t less than minus 1. So it's easier to see this with the cartoon. Here's our signal x of tau. Here is our signal h of t minus tau. So now we're considering the case when h has kind of engulfed x of tau completely. And it's easy to tell where the overlap is. The overlap is between minus 1 and 1. So we do our convolution integral product. We take the product of these two signals and evaluate the convolution integral. By looking at the little sketch, we can tell what the limits of the integral are. They're going to be from minus 1 to 1. And over that region of tau, both signals are equal to 1. So I'm actually just integrating 1 from minus 1 to 1, which is equal to 2. Again, let's simplify the bounds that we had for this case. One of the bounds was 1 plus t greater than or equal to 1. If I subtract 1 from both sides, I have that t is greater than or equal to 0. And the other bound we had was minus 3 plus t is less than minus 1. So in case 3, we're making sure that the back edge has, of h has not gone past the back edge of h. So for this bound, if I add 3 to both sides, I get t is less than 2. So we have another piece to our solution. For this case, for this region of time, being time between 0 and 2, we have that y of t is equal to 2. Case 4. Minus 3 plus t is greater than or equal to negative 1, and minus 3 plus t is less than 1. It's easier to tell this from the cartoon sketch again. There's a plot of x of tau. And this case now considers when h of t minus tau, the back edge of h, has slid past the back edge of x of tau. So I can tell the region of overlap now by looking at the sketch. It's this gray area from minus 3 plus t up to positive 1. So I can evaluate the integral of the product. So the integral of the product is going to be an integral from minus 3 plus t up to 1. And again, both signals are equal to 1 on that time interval. So I'm just integrating 1 from minus 3 plus t to 1. That's equal to 1 minus the quantity, minus 3 plus t, which is equal to 4 minus t. Let's simplify the bounds. One of the bounds was minus 3 plus t greater than or equal to negative 1. If I add 3 to both sides, that simplifies to t greater than or equal to 2. And the other bound was minus 3 plus t less than 1. If I add 3 to both sides, that simplifies to t less than 4. So we have another piece to the puzzle here. y of t is equal to 4 minus t, four time values of t between 2 and 4. And finally, we have one more case to consider, and this is the case where our signal h has slid past x completely. We've now gotten to a large enough t to where h of t minus tau is completely shifted past x of tau. So there's no overlap in this case. So evaluating the convolution integral for this specific value or range of t's is very easy because I just have to integrate 0, which is easy to do. So I get 0. If we simplify the bounds, our bound, only bound in this case, was minus 3 plus t greater than or equal to 1. So if I add 3 to both sides, this results in t greater than or equal to 4. So my final kind of piece to the puzzle is y of t is equal to 0 for t greater than or equal to 4. So let's put everything together now. We have five different cases that we just considered. If we go back to each chart and put them all together in a piecewise equation, we found that y of t was equal to 0 for t less than negative 2, is equal to 2 plus t for values of t between minus 2 and 0. It was equal to 2 for t between 0 and 2, 4 minus t for t between 2 and 4, and 0 for t greater than 4. If we plot this, so there's a plot of y of t, Along the time axis, t now, it's 0 for time less than minus 2. Over the time interval minus 2 to 0, it's essentially ramping up. So it starts at 0 and ramps up to a value of 2 when time is equal to 0. It holds constant until time 2, and then it ramps down until it hits 0 at time 4, and then it's 0 for all time after that.
So that finishes this problem. The way that you do convolution integrals for other problems are, are very similar. You need to be able to sketch each piece of the convolution integral. Lots of the pieces of the convolution integral are simple. X of tau is simple to plot. The kind of preliminary steps of plotting H of tau and H of minus tau are straightforward. The trickiest part is plotting H of t minus tau. The easiest way to do that is once you have a plot of H of minus tau is to literally just add t to the points on the axis where you have the edges. So in this case we had you know minus 1 and 3 we added t to it. If you can just keep track of those points on the axis then slide it around. That's the easiest way to do these types of problems.